As a chemistry teacher, it's my job to help students understand chemical reactions, but I also feel it's my duty to help them see the beauty of chemistry. Take this reaction for example, it's very standard. A single replacement reaction between silver nitrate and copper metal produces silver crystals and copper nitrate. You might have seen this before, like this, or like this, or like this, and those aren't bad. But to really capture the beauty of this chemical reaction, I tried connecting my camera to a microscope. And let me tell you, I was astounded at the beauty of the footage that I saw. I wanna start by showing you the chemical reaction, and then I'm gonna show you two things that even I, a person with a chemistry degree, learned from watching this amazing footage. I love that so much. Okay, here's the chemistry in one minute or less, and then the two things that I think are really cool. So the tiny heart is made of copper metal, and the solid that I added from the jar is the compound silver nitrate. When the silver dissolves in the water and diffuses over to the copper where it starts to react, the silver ion steals an electron from the copper. And when it does so, it can no longer stay dissolved in the water and it precipitates out as those silver crystals. Now, as more and more of the silver ions make it to the copper, they too will steal electrons and they will also precipitate out as elemental silver on top of their predecessors, causing the silver crystals to grow larger and larger and larger larger as long as there's the supply of both of those reactants present. Now meanwhile, the copper that's having electrons stolen from it becomes copper 2 plus ions, which can no longer stay attached to the copper wire, and it dissolves in the solution and floats away. You can see this in these later shots as this blue-green cloud drifts away from the silver heart. The color comes from the copper 2 and copper 3 ions, leaving the reaction site. So the two cool and unexpected things. Number one, Look at this end shot. The reaction is almost stopped. There aren't very many new crystals being formed, but then an air bubble rises and a moment after, another spire of silver erupts from the structure. Why is this? Well, the reaction is stopped because the copper has been all used up. We call that the limiting reagent. So the silver ions in solution don't have anyone to take electrons from and form more crystals. The reaction is stopped, but in this case it wasn't totally used up. The bubble must have been protecting a little bit of copper metal that hasn't reacted yet. So when it rises, that copper metal is exposed and a little bit more reaction can happen, forming the silver spire that you see on the left here. Cool thing number two is this shot. Watch as the structure seems to open up and barf out a little patch of brown stuff. What the heck in Heimer is this? Well, we know that it's not more of the copper nitrate because that would have a blue or blue-green color. So I think it has to be copper oxides. They would be brown in color, which is what we see here, and existing on the surface of the wire already because of oxidation as the wire was sitting around in my tool chest. Now, as the reaction takes place, this skin of silver ion starts to form 
the production of the copper nitrate must be generating a little bit of pressure inside, which causes the silver to split, expelling the copper oxides, which haven't reacted out into the solution. Um, they don't dissolve very well, which is why they appear as this kind of little cloud of chunky stuff. I have honestly never seen this before, and I love it so much. This chemical reaction is spontaneous, meaning that the reaction progresses without the need for the continual input of energy. A non-spontaneous reaction, like the production of these copper crystals, can be driven by an external power supply or a battery. The crystals have a totally different look, but are just as beautiful, and you can check out that video here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.